Hey guys, this is the Real Hadil podcast, and today I have Kim Frederick, and she's a sales trainer and coach. And today she's going to be talking about how everybody needs sales and how they can incorporate it in their job. So, Kim, please tell us a little bit more about how you got into sales and kind of what what led you here today. Well, thanks for having me on today. I'm delighted to be here um, because I think this is something that most people have no idea how is important mm-hmm. how important it is in our day to day lives, not just at work, but you know in our relationships at home as well. Right. Um, so, this is kind of funny story. Um, starts with the whole thing of would you like fries with? Uh, I got my start in sales at McDonald's a long, long time ago. Wow. But I tell you, it's a great introduction to business and um, not just um, selling, but customer service, how that's related to sales and the whole nine yards. So I learned an enormous amount when I was 14 and, and about, about sales and selling. And would you like fries? I love it. I love it. 14 years old, you started selling. Wow. Mm-hmm. So you're, yep. you're, you're like a pro probably by the age of 18, maybe. You're just yeah. selling everything for away. Sure. Oh, for sure, because, you know, I worked in food services all the way through school and, and right up to when I finished my college. And, um, you know, I mean, food services is sales. You're, you're, that's exactly what it is. I mean, a lot of people don't think of it that way, but it certainly is. And then uh, I moved into there into actually a real sales role. My very first job once I was out of university was a sales job. Wow. And I was selling memberships to Tourism Nanaimo, a very small town on Vancouver Island, but I worked for the tourist board and I sold memberships. Wow. And, you know, I love the point you made about how um, in the food industry, it's all about selling because it's so true. My first, my actually, my first job was being a waitress at right. some family owned restaurant. It was actually a Greek restaurant. And it's funny. You don't think you're, you have to sell because people are coming to you to come into this restaurant to mm-hmm. eat there. But in reality, like if you wanted to upsell them on wine, if you wanted to upsell them on other things, right. dessert, you really have to sell them on the idea of why it's so good and why you got to have it today. You know? Right. right. Because, I mean, the reality is it's in your pocket, right? The more exactly. you sell, the higher your tip, blah, blah. Plus, it's you're providing a great experience for exactly. somebody. Exactly. So there is such a huge connection between mm-hmm. service and sales. And it's not just more expensive wine Mm -hmm. or are you going to have dessert i mean really that's all wrapped into um the whole experience you're providing to the customer 100 percent like 100 i remember my it was funny when i was um when i was waitressing in georgetown actually that was a harder that was a such a harder way harder crowd to to sell to because Mm -hmm. you know they had their own way of thinking and and their own wants and whatnot but the way I got away with selling them on other items and getting them to try new things mm-hmm. um, was the way I described certain food items and made right. it relatable to things that they like. For example, I would always ask, so do you prefer fruity tasting types of uh, desserts or do you prefer more chocolate, caramel kind of thing? And they'll be like, oh, I definitely like the fruit. So I'm like, okay, well, have you ever had a toast or strudel? And then I'll go into like other things that they have probably have tried it in their childhood that mm-hmm. kind of like remind them how good it was and then they're like oh wow that, that's a great so example you that. have just totally hit on the key to sales you are helping somebody identify a problem oftentimes a problem they didn't even know they had but because you are taking the time to ask the questions to make the connection with the person you're able to say to them get to provide them with a much more engaging experience not only because they've engaged with you but because you've understood what it is that they're looking for, they didn't even know they were looking for that. And then you were able to introduce them to something and sell something else, which let's say the, re- the reality is what you're trying to do is to provide a service that solves a problem. Mm. And in this case, okay, it's not really a problem. They didn't really need to have dessert, but right. what you've done is you've provided a much better experience and mm. they're going to be grateful for that. And everybody's happy. Your customer's happy, you're happy, your boss is happy. Everybody's happy. It's all a really beautiful win-win. No, I love it. And I mean, I, I didn't even know I was doing that. So there you go. <laughs> that, right. Exactly. So, so a lot of people, and clearly you're one of these people, a lot of people kind of get this intuitively mm-hmm. and a lot of people don't because, um, I don't know, for, for one, one reason or another, and we can blame used car salesmen if we like, but mm-hmm. for one reason or another, sales has a bad reputation and people are really afraid to be tainted with that brush so we i work with people all the time who say i'm not a salesperson right and i say well what do you do 
Mm-hmm. And once we discover what they do, then you know, I say, well, of course you're a salesperson. And actually, in order for you to be successful, you need to sell. And that's the first hurdle to get over. It's almost like, you know, if you're an alcoholic and you go to Alcoholics Anonymous, the first step is to admit that you have a problem. Well, same sort of thing. The first yeah. step is to acknowledge that actually you do have a sales response. Mm-hmm. And then, then what we do is we say, well, it's not actually that scary. And nor is it slimy. And nor is it sleazy. It shouldn't be. Because what you're doing is helping somebody solve a problem. Right? And mm-hmm. what you're trying to do is make that connection between whatever it is that you're selling, product or service, and make that connection to someone who needs that product mm-hmm. or service. And, and in the best scenarios, you're crafting a solution that really works. Um, but I, I just love what you said about you did that without even having any training and without even really, so you intuitively understood that by by helping somebody try something maybe they hadn't or that maybe brought them back to a, a happy place in their childhood, that that was going to be a good thing for them, for you, for the, and for the business. And you intuitively understood that. So I sometimes feel like small business owners who really get that are mm-hmm. often really, really successful because they get that. And, and they structure their entire business on that basis. Mm-hmm. So what we were talking about was the people who don't think they're successful. Right. Right. Because a lot of people do that. And, and I get a lot of people who say to me all the time, things like, well, I'm, I'm really introverted. Mm-hmm. And so I can't, I can't be a good salesperson because in their mind, a salesperson needs to be, you know, larger than life and like a really extroverted and blah, blah, blah. Well, all right. so what do you think? What works better? Honestly, what works better is the, yeah. pers- the person who's the person who's more cares more about what the other person wants versus who they are. If they're because ex- usually right. the extroverts are are yes. self centered well, in a sense. Wait, you you if you totally got it. So what you need to do now? I am an extrovert, mm-hmm. but I'm also a very good salesperson, and I will tell you why. It's because while I can be extrovert and I get my energy from being around other people, mm-hmm. the key is being able to listen. So as you were saying, when you were talking in your, your waitressing job, you asked questions about mm-hmm. your childhood and you know, whether what you looked at what else they had to eat and the rest of their meal you were talking about dessert. So the key here is to be able to ask the right questions and listen mm-hmm. to the answers. So this is why um, introverts are often better at sales because they're listening and they are well skilled in listening just by their very nature doesn't mean an extrovert is a bad salesperson right no right, right but but you see that the connection there mm-hmm. that a lot of times an introvert will feel that they can't possibly be a salesperson actually mm-hmm. wow yeah. you're, giving, you're giving all introverts a, a hope and a chance now in life <laughs> uh, well well absolutely i mean that's what i do i i help people find their sales confidence mm-hmm. uh, because you know here's the thing we're all salespeople. Mm-hmm. Right? um you know if you're in a relationship at some point, you're selling the other person because you want to do something you don't. If you have children, and all people who have children put their hand up right now, um, you are absolutely selling your children all the time. All right. the time, right? Um, and that's just at home. You have any personal relationships like with friends, you, you have a group of people and you want to do something together or you want to encourage somebody to use it, you're selling all the time. Mm-hmm. So change that into a work situation. You may not have a revenue generating responsibility, but if you're working with colleagues, you need to sell your colleagues. If you have good ideas and you want your boss to listen to your good ideas, you need to sell your ideas, right? So like we're all selling all the time. And so really basic sales skills are something that I think everybody should have. Mm -hmm. Um, When and then when you are actually in a revenue generating role, even if it's only part of your role, then it becomes more important. And you really need to hone those and practice even more. Um, I just find that it's a surprise to people how it, much it's, it's a part of our lives. It really, because a lot of people like really are defensive when you talk about it. Sometimes mm-hmm. I remember I was in a conversation with one guy and he was an extreme introvert. Right. And and I was telling, he was telling me all the problems he had in his business. And I was like, well, I looked at him and I was like, you know, why don't you just, why don't you get a team of salesmen? And if, since you don't like, I told him like, since you don't, like no, I do. Right. And, and I, I, I tell, tell people that the same thing. 
Mm -hmm. If you're so, so uncomfortable and you can't get over that hurdle and you can't, you just can't do it, then you should hire. That's what I said. And I told him, I was like, listen, like, if that's something that you don't want to do, you can tremendously help your business if you just got other people doing it for you. Right. And he was still so against that. He was like, oh, I don't sell. He was like, I don't sell at all. Selling is bad. And I was like, you can't be in business if you can't sell. That's what I'm saying. There's, 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 I mean, a business is, exists to provide a service or sell a product, right? Exactly. So actually, but I bring it that back to when, um, and I know you work with lots of um, entrepreneurs and I have worked with lots of entrepreneurs and the reality is you are selling mm-hmm. not just your product or your service, but you're selling yourself because exactly. you are the creator of that product or service. Mm-hmm. And you know, you might think, oh, I've got this great idea. I can start a business. Fantastic. And I'll probably need to do some selling. Yeah, you know, you're a business owner. Yeah. How much selling do you need to do? Every day. <laughs> right. Like it's a lot. It's mm-hmm. a lot. And you're selling your product, you're right. selling your services, and you're selling yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's every day, all the time. And I think a lot of people who start businesses aren't maybe totally aware self-service especially at the beginning right once you get it going and it starts to have its own momentum then maybe you do hire on some sales help you know you you get to the point where you have a sales team but Mm -hmm. at the beginning it's all you right I mean 100% it is all you and it amazes me how many people just look at it as such a negative way. I mean, well, actually I can't even talk because like I told you from before, I, I looked at sales as the worst thing in the whole entire world. <laughs> I was, right. Right. My first company, I refused to sell. And when I first started the company and um, I had a team, I remember when I told you I had a team of salesmen and yeah. I was the person running them and I never even sold right. once. And then you were telling, telling them that they, didn't, they weren't doing it right. And they said, you better come out and do it. And that's when you found out what was really happening. And that's when I found out my product wasn't sell. It wasn't sellable. It wasn't and people didn't want it. Right, right. That's a hard way to learn that. It was a very hard, very hard. <laughs> it was a thirty grand hard way to learn. <laughs> it was hard. right, right. But but so I think what you learn from that is that you got to sell every day. Exactly. And it's always about selling. And so that's where I think it's so important for people to detangle that mm-hmm. sliminess factor. Because it's not. If you if you look at it from the point of view of service, mm. that I have a product or I have a service. Okay, so we, in this area, we have a lot of service businesses, right? Because we have a lot of brain power here. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of businesses based on that. So, okay, that's what you're selling. And it's a service to somebody. So you're basically sales, instead of saying it as like you're pushing something on somebody, no, you're not. You're connecting people who need or can benefit from your product or service with your product or service. So you're helping them solve a problem and it comes from that point of view service. And I think a lot of people, once they grasp that, mm-hmm. then it starts to make sense. Then they're like, oh, okay, I don't need to push something on somebody who doesn't want it. Well, no, because then you're wasting your time and their time. Mm-hmm. What your job as a salesperson is, is to find the people who are likely to need your product or service and then find out if they do, and if they don't, help them discover that they do, if they don't think they do. Because right. that's often what happens. I'm sure you learn about this too. You're talking to people and as you're having a sales conversation and you're learning more about them and their business, you discover that they don't actually know what their business is. You know what their business Mm-hmm. And and through your conversation, you help them to discover what their actual problem is, right? Does, right. does that happen? All the time. All, All the time. time, right? So that's that's the job of the salesperson mm-hmm. is to help people realize what their actual problem is, and then provide a solution where it's a nice match. Right. And I like when you said it's it's figuring out and helping people, right, in the process. Yeah. So- so now you just, if you wanted to, you could even just take sales out of the, out of like out of your vocabulary and just saying, Hey, mm-hmm. I'm just having a, con- I know one of my, um, one just of my, having a conversation. Yes. He was like, yes. it's, it's not a sales meeting. Stop calling it that. He told me he was like, it's a conversation. It's a You're conversation. Having- and, and here's the difference between a conversation that you might have with your girlfriend mm-hmm. and I might have with my husband mm-hmm. and where there's a possibility of doing a business transaction. The difference is, is that you as the, okay, we're going to say it, salesperson, you are managing that sales conversation. 
and you are asking the questions that are going to allow you to continue to manage it so that you get it to where you need it to be. Because again, you don't want to waste your time, right. nor do you want to waste the customer's time. Mm -hmm. So it's about, that's where the skill is, right? So you, there, we talked to, I've already mentioned a couple times where there's skill. So being able to correctly identify the people who are most likely to benefit from your product or service, and then getting in front of them in some way, shape, or form and having that conversation. And right. then managing the conversation mm -hmm. so that it gets to where you need it to be. I mean, it, it, it's all just, and I'm making it very simple, but that's because I think it really is. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. Um, something that I always, always have a problem with was trying to get them to have that conversation with them, you know, trying to yeah. say, Hey, do you, do you mind getting, do you mind having a meeting with me? We just talk about your marketing and just really understand right. see how I could best help you. Or if there is a, a potential relationship between us that we could move forward with. And sometimes that was always that, that, that one, that step, like I would, I'm really good at getting in front of people. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, Oh shoot. <laughs> how do okay, I get so, them from? So, so then we need to team up because yeah. that's actually where I have more trouble. I'm really good. Once I get somebody in front of me, Mm -hmm. I, I I don't I close a very very high number. Uh, my conversion rate is very high, mm -hmm. but but I have a hard time getting past the people don't answer the phone, people don't read the emails, do you read the emails, right? So that's that's the to me that's the marketing part. That's mm -hmm. why you're good at it because mm -hmm. that's what you do. You're a marketer, and that part is marketing. Once somebody says, "Yeah, I'm interested in talking to you," to me, that's when sales starts. Right. Um, you could argue that the whole thing is sales because mm -hmm. I mean it's all geared towards eventually having a transaction where money is exchanged, right? Mm -hmm. But but the, the part about getting somebody to say yes to talking to you, that to me is more marketing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's why you're that's why you're good at that. That's probably why I'm good at that. Yeah, maybe that's, that's why you're good at that, right? I have, I know many creative ways I can definitely share of how I've I've gotten in front of people. And it works every time. But then right. I'm like, okay, now what? I'm like, all right. So, so I'm just like, I'm like, so how, how's your marketing going? <laughs> yes, yes. So, so here's what we need to do. You need to get me, you need to help me mm -hmm. that part. And I need to help you with figuring out those questions, the questions that you need to ask to help you manage that conversation. Because it's about, and I'm so full of cliches today, um, it's about unpeeling that onion. It right. really is. You start at the top and you say, well, you do marketing. Are you happy with it? Most people will say no. Or they'll be like, well, it's working okay. But everybody always wants more, right? Right. Everybody always wants more. So then you start unpeeling. Okay, what is it? Let's unpeel this layer. What is it that you're not really happy with? Okay, cool. Unpeel the next layer. What do you think could be improved? What are your actual goals? What is it you're trying to achieve and how close are you to achieving next layer? So, and as you, this is for you, mm -hmm. as you continue to unpeel that, then suddenly it becomes very clear to you what their issue is and how you can help them solve it. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Oh, look at that. We just did an on-air coaching call for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I can, I can return the favor. So, okay. so you say it's hard to get in front of some of these people, right? Yeah, so that's because... I don't put a lot of money or time into marketing. I really, because I'm good at sales. So I right. Just that. I just pick up the phone and I cold call. Right. And wow. Actually, okay. I actually cold call. I do. And, and I'm, I actually don't do too badly. Um, but what would be better, what would be even better is if people called me. Okay. So, yeah. so okay. So I'm going to give you my secret because it works like a charm. Um, okay. I'm listening. Handwritten letters. Ah, so think about way. that. It's yeah. it, no one does it anymore. No, and that's a great way. I send a letter, mm -hmm. and I say, and I'm going to call you on this day. Mm -hmm. It could be, it could be that. What, what yeah. I do is okay. So, for instance, my podcast, like a great example yeah. to get people on here. And let's say, you know, people will be surprised. That sometimes it's hard to get really, um, really successful people on here. They think, oh, like oh, sure. everybody wants to get on a podcast, but no, not really. You know, everyone's really busy. Right. So. One of my really great tactics that's have been working tremendously for me is I would, let's say there's someone I don't know personally, like I knew you personally, but let's say someone I didn't know personally, and I'm, I'm just kind of introducing myself and I'm a stranger to them, right? Mm -hmm. What I do is I write a handwritten letter and I say, you know, um, oh, a perfect example is, is a dentist that's mine now. I really wanted to get, 
I really didn't want to talk to her solely because um, I saw the work she was doing. She was not a typical dentist. She would go actually yeah. go and go to a ton of networking events, even start host her own events. And okay. and she just she I noticed that she built her clientele um, based off of people she loved to work with that most right. dentists don't do. Right. And, I, yeah. and I noticed that in her. And I was like, you know, I'd love to just have a conversation with her and really just just get to know her and maybe like pick yeah. her up a little, you know? And I'm like, how do you do that without being weird and creepy, you know? <laughs> or just yeah, right, you know, right. going up there randomly. So I- Cause, cause, cause there is a creepiness factor, let's be honest. I mean, now nowadays with yeah. the whole situations, yeah, people get really yeah, creeped yeah. out. Yeah. So I was like, what can I do that just like, it feels genuine to me, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then and that's not- That's important, that's important. Exactly, like what's my approach where I feel like I'm doing a good thing and I'm not, I'm not really being like strategic or anything like that. Like I felt good about it and I feel like she would feel good about it too. So I was like, you know what? I'm really good at being sentimental and doing like handcraft things. So I was like, let me write her a handwritten letter. So I wrote her a handwritten letter and it simply mm -hmm. said, you know, um, dear blank. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Do you actually write it with a pen? I actually write with a pen. Like actually handwritten. Like I, I actually write it with in a, in a like before in I have it written already. And like, yeah. so, so now I just like copy it so I can write it nicely with a pen. Right, right. But it's not typed. It's actually no. handwritten. It's handwritten. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. And then I say, you know, dear doctor, whatever. And then I'll say, um, I hope, and I, I would send, oh, and I would send a dozen donuts because okay. I'm a very specific in the profession. So for instance, let's say I want to get in front of her. She was a dentist. I don't know what it is, but dentists love donuts. It's very funny. It's interesting. <laughs> it's, they probably tell all their clients not to eat things like that. I know they do, but you know, people, <laughs> they just love their donuts. So I was like, you know what? Let me, let me get her, let me get her a nice donut. So duck donuts. I got her a dozen for her staff. And I said, dear Dr. Blank, um, please enjoy these, the uh, Nova's best donuts called, you know, duck donuts. And then I said, um, mm -hmm. I really admire, I've been, I've been researching a lot about you. And I just want to mm -hmm. say that I really admire that you're a woman owned practice. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed that you live, you've built, I will say something really kind and generous, like, or something, something that I've noticed about them that I admire about them saying like, you know, I really mm -hmm. admire the work you do and you're a great role model to this community. And then I'll continue by saying, you know, I run my own woman owned podcast and mm -hmm. I would love to have you on there. I think you have a lot of wisdom and knowledge you could share to mm -hmm. my viewers. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people will learn from you. So and then, do, you, do you know what you've just described? What? I have um, all kinds of blog posts from sales experts. Mm -hmm. You just described how people want or, or how you are supposed to sell. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah you absolutely did. So you're, um, the, all the experts, and this is it, I, I do do this, mm -hmm. uh, but all the experts do exactly this. You find something about that person that you, or something that they've done, or something that's new and noteworthy, and you connect with them about that. And there's, mm. that you're, and it's, and what you did there was you said, I've noticed that you are a role model in the community. I'm really, um, in, you know, you are amazed that, or you know, what did you say? I don't know. What did you say? Right. You connected that you love that she's a female business owner who's building a business and doing all these amazing things. So, first of all, you're trying to make a connection on something that you do truly and genuinely admire. And that's awesome because who's not going to say, I'm interested in talking to this person. Right. Because, because you are genuinely saying these things. Mm -hmm. Now it gets a little tricky when you're not being genuine. Mm -hmm. But if you're genuine in what you're saying and you are expressing appreciation for something and admiration in some cases, um, yeah, people are going to listen to that. Right. So in, in a business setting, same thing. You say, I noticed that your company has been doing X, Y, Z, and I'm really interested in that. I'm wondering how that's been working out for you or whatever. But the point of it is, is to make, to, to, get, to get in the door so that they have some connection to who you are and why they might want to speak to you. So that's interesting. That's what you're already doing. That's totally sales. I, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess so. Because, yes, it, because is. it worked like a charm because she ended up calling me, you know, yeah. it, she ended up calling that's me 20 minutes after I dropped it off. Like I had who friend. wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Right? You have, because it's handwritten, there was something for her staff. You did all the right things. Um, you know, you, you did all these things to make a connection to say, I value you. Right? Mm -hmm. So now she's going to say, yeah, okay, I'll talk to this, this woman. I'll see what she wants and what she's about. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Yeah, and and honestly, it it 
that's how you get in front of certain people, right? Let's say yeah, someone. Really yeah. Well, yes, and and I, I guess I maybe need to think about how I can do that. Yeah, and it's it's yeah. different because I'm telling her my so so one thing I had to change my mindset in, and I can see maybe this how this can it probably help you too is you know I was like okay I'm really selling the heck out of this podcast right. Mm -hmm. And really getting someone in the door, it well, it initially helps me also just getting to know people. So if I wanted to, let's say, get in front of someone really big and just really wanted to get, you know, I got a conversation mm -hmm. with them, maybe potentially do business with them. It also helps too, you know, because sure. it's an, it's, first of all, it's less threatening, right? Right. It gives them an opportunity to get to know me without having to feel like I'm selling them on anything. And if they choose to want to move forward with me in any aspect in their life, whether it be business or non-business, right. they'll already figure it out through the podcast. It's just so funny how you said you're selling them on something. But here's the thing. You are selling them, right? Yeah. You, you absolutely are. You have something that you want them to do. You want them to be on your podcast. Or perhaps you want them to purchase your marketing services. Mm -hmm. You know, the reality is you're doing the same things. You're making connections. You're getting to know the person, right? Because why is that? Mm -hmm. Because... We buy from people we know, like, and trust. Exactly. How many times have you heard that, right? So, but it's true because it, and you would rather, much rather buy from somebody who you already know. If you buy from your friend, perfect. Mm -hmm. your friend, if you don't have any friends who it is that you need, then you're going to buy from somebody that you know. Right. Because you already trust them. Mm -hmm. Because you, there's, there's already some basis of relationship established. And then adding on to that, the part about, understanding what their, their need is, then you can say, you know, I think I can help you. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be willing to listen. And they're much more likely, when you think about all the different networking meetings you go to, you're much more likely to give your business to somebody that you know through one of those situations where you've met somebody mm -hmm. than you are to just look up in Yelp or in Yelp is or wherever it is that you're looking at, right? No, I agree. 100%. Right, and, and you know, and that's that's the thing that we were talking about way, way, way at the beginning about mm -hmm. how some small business owners, especially, intuitively get it, and that's one of the things that we intuitively get. Mm -hmm. and, and it's about making those connections, and that's maybe where extrovert has an advantage because it's easier for an extrovert to make those connections. Like, you know, introverted person going to a networking event is is horrifying, right? Mm -hmm. Right. They, they can do it, but it really takes a lot out of them. And so that's where, so you have that mix. An extrovert is much better at making those initial connections. An introvert is much better at listening. Right. So you, they each need to take something from the other to be the most effective. I agree 100%. And also to add on, you know, another thing that has helped me get in front of the door with other people besides the podcast is this book called How to Get a Meeting with Anyone. I don't know if I can. Oh, it this way. I can see it. Yeah. Oh, I saw or maybe. I don't no, know how to, way. whatever, whatever no, way it works. That way, yeah. So this book by um, Stu Heineck, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. I probably butchered his last name, but basically this book is the bomb.com. Literally, okay. you, it has from like, uh, let's see, Sandler, 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 Sandler's training, right? About mm -hmm. how to. Um, how to get in front of anybody. He actually partnered with Sandler, the CEO himself, and actually used his tactics in the book to get in front of people. So Stu, right. his his background, he's actually a, so he's a comic artist. Okay. So that's, it's, it's funny how it started. So he would draw comics for the Washington Post, for big mm -hmm. magazines. And when he wanted to kind of increase his clientele let's say right he wanted to increase the sales mm -hmm. in his clientele he started he, he he needs he had to figure out a way to get in front of these top magazines to say mm -hmm. hey you know i would love to be in your magazine and do and, right. you know have my my comics in in your um magazine and the way he did that was he would he would design he would create personalized comics mm -hmm. in a po on a postcard mm -hmm. to right. these companies right and because it shows what he does but exactly it's per, but it's, pers it's, both per it's personalized and it shows what he does that's brilliant exactly and then he'll yeah. he'll use it in a way where it would make sense for them to want to use him right right to like to, to purchase his uh, his uh service i yeah. guess you could say right yep. yep and he would just give it to them and it he literally had an roi of a, of a hundred like literally a hundred percent yeah and well, that, that's a that's brilliant and you know i was just thinking about how i was saying that i struggled to get people to answer the phone you know the reality is Mm -hmm. um everybody's busy 
And you can't always get people on the phone. You can't always get people to open it. And you've got hundred millions of emails coming in, right? So th this is the thing about you can get in front of people. It just takes time. Exactly. And this is like this guy too, same thing. It took time because he, he didn't like send out 50 all at once because he had to draw them. So, but it takes time. And, this, and, and in sales, anybody who's looking to do um, connect with clients and customers and we call it prospecting, it's hard because mm -hmm. you've got to keep on, keep on, keep on. And you might leave a voicemail and you might send an email and you might send a handwritten letter and you might do this. And at some point, someone's going to be like, all right, yeah, I'm, I am actually interested in talking to this person. But it, it may take a little while. And you got to keep going and keep going. And it is disheartening when it takes a little while before people say, oh, yeah, you do want to talk to me, right? Doesn't right. Mean you're not going to get the meeting. You'll get it eventually. Mm -hmm. Exactly, 100%. And it amazes me how all his tactics in the book has, has worked tremendously. Like, he's gotten yeah. a turn on our way. It's, it's, it's like above and beyond what people have ever mm -hmm. seen. And, right. it, and he really knows how to hound down on the fact that, like, it's what it's it's how to be genuine about it and also how to really get their attention without having to say you know an email or a cold call or whatever it may be it's really like how do you get in front of them and really stick out and and he did it in a way that also allowed him to illustrate what it was he was trying to sell exactly he has so like a ton I, actually, of tactics. I think that's i think that's really you know well this particular cartoonist guy I, that, that's the guy who wrote the book right? yeah yeah but i i mean i love that he he took his actual product exactly i think that's brilliant like so for you if your product is um let's say we talk about the social media side right so you're you're what you should be doing is something amazing with facebook advertising mm -hmm. right because that's the product you're selling if you do turn it around and do that to sell your business mm -hmm. doesn't that make sense right 100 percent. i mean I, I, i'm just I'm just thinking here out loud. Now, so um, for me, it's a little harder because I teach sales training. You know, I do sales workshops, so it's very hard for me to do that in a handwritten letter. But you have to, yeah. I have to do, but I have to be able to do like what we're doing today. We're talking about some of the things that some people maybe don't know, mm -hmm. and and it's that. It's, so it's giving you, and you know this too, probably. Mm -hmm. that it's giving away a little bit of the knowledge so people understand what you're talking about. Exactly. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And I can see how that would work. One hundred percent. And actually, you know, this book would actually be good for you because yeah. it, he's he's actually training salespeople, right, on how to get in front of the door with other people. And it actually tells you a ton of tactics for sales trainers. Right. Right. Well, I should because it. you should because it's it because it, it helps you figure out like okay, because like you said, you don't have necessarily something you can give them, right? Because you are a sales trainer and coach, but what you can do is sell them on you and how do you get in front of right. them? Like that? Right, exactly. So so actually, well, I, one of the things that I need to do is get on my list for a long time. I need to just do, I need to do little videos and I need to do yes. just little, little video snippets and I need to put those out into, um, into the wide world. Mm. 100%, 100%. And, you know, hey, it doesn't hurt for you to do these podcasts too, or maybe just something like, or just daily tips for yourself to put out for everybody, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it shows that, because the thing at the end of the day, what you have to do is you have to, in order to get in front of someone, you have to give them value. That's the, that's uh, the bottom line. Oh, thank you. Yes, that's so critical. And I'm sure you know that 100%. Like, you just yeah. have to know, like, it's like the, the go first principle my, my mentor once told me. He was like, you have to go first, right? You have to give value first, right? right. And, and it can go first in many ways. Go first in the conversation of the sales meeting. It can go first mm -hmm. in whatever it may be. But the way I think of go first as well is you need to go first and give that value first. You need to go first yes. and, and, and show them how you could be beneficial in their life in some way, right? right? By giving that, that's part of establishing the know, like, and trust. Right. Because if you are able to give something away that is useful and valuable, then somebody is going to trust you because mm -hmm. you've given them something that's valuable. Exactly. Right? right? And then you take it from there. And that's what I was talking about, that it's, it's a sort of, yeah, you do, you give away some of what you are able to help people with, and that allows them to sort of come into your, um, into your sphere, I guess. I mean, that sounds terrible, but you know what I mean. Right, right. It, it allows them to start to understand a little bit about who you are mm -hmm. and to start to begin that process of dis establishing trust. 
One hundred percent. So, so now I want to kind of transition a little bit more about the difference between the way men sell and the way women sell, and how. Because yeah. I know a lot of my viewers are women and men as well, but but I would love to to hear your your intake on how how women have an advantage in selling. Sure. And what men can learn from them, and what men have an advantage in selling, what women can learn from them. So it's a really funny one, this, because you have um, women selling to women, women selling to men, men selling to women, men selling to women. So it crisscrosses all over, right? Right. Um, and I actually, I wrote about this recently, and I have, I write a blog um, every other week, and I do mm. provide a lot of really, really fantastic sales advice and tips for how people can improve what they're doing. But I, I did do some research on what's going on, because what's happened uh, as we've become um, more educated in what about brains mm -hmm. and the differences between men's brains and women's brains. So there is actually what they've learned, and I don't remember which is which, but one, the, either men or women have a larger um, white matter portion in their brains. And, and let's just say that's women. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But what that means, and that particular, that, that part of the brain is much more focused on emotion and um, feelings and connecting and all of that stuff that we have for eons, all the way back to cavemen probably, understood that our female brains. What, what we're finding now is there is actually basis physiologically. And in for men, the larger mass in their brains is the part of the brain that deals with um, logic and uh, facts and figures and information and all that information processing, which again, all the way back to cavemen, is what we've known. We say men are rational and logical and they don't do feeling stuff. That's like your feelings, right? So what we're finding now is that there is actually a reason for that mm -hmm. in our brains. So what does that mean for sales? It's kind of cool. It means that when you're selling to women, and it's interesting that I talk to people who are in the home building space or home renovating, you always have a couple. So your salesperson has to be able to walk the line between both. So women, women need to be addressed emotionally. They need to um, feel like they're being heard and the things that are important to them are communicated mm -hmm. on an emotional level. Men are like, tell me the budget, Tell me how long this is going to take. Tell me what's going to happen and what I need to do and where I need to be there. Right? right? Right. Okay. So the salesperson has to be able to address that on both sides. Mm -hmm. and, and then talking about how women sell. So looking at that. Okay. So women tend to be more in tune with emotion, tend to be able to um, read emotion. Better. So what does that mean for a female salesperson and the success of a female salesperson versus a male salesperson? Mm -hmm. It turns out there is um, research that shows women are more successful as a rule, okay? I mean, obviously there are some tremendously successful men and there are women who are in good, right? So we'll get that out of the way. But the reason women are better is because of what I said way back at the beginning, women tend to be better at connecting Women tend to be a little more intuitive because of this emotional connection. So they're able to hear and see things that the person they're talking to maybe isn't overtly sharing. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they're also able to make, they're able to connect then that emotion to the issue or the problem that you solve. So that's not to say men can't do that. It's just easier. Mm -hmm. So women do tend to be better at sales, which is so funny because when you think of a sales person, what do you think of? You think of men. Right. And that has been all the way, that's been the case that men are salespeople. Uh, I'm, and it's interesting because we're now seeing the research and the science to show us that actually women are people. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I can, I believe it. I mean, I, I really do because sometimes you look at companies and Usually the top salespeople are the women, especially the ones right. who mastered right. doing it. There's this really, there's a, a software company that supports sales and um, they do a lot of research. They analyze telephone calls, sales calls. Mm -hmm. and, and then they're able to break it all down and they say, okay, so they say, they think that the people who talk the most should be less successful because they're listening less. Mm -hmm. And um, so they, they analyze all that. The ratio of salesperson talking to client talking and listening all that. And so what it comes out in the end is they say women do tend to talk more and listen less, which is would be counterintuitive because what they're 
they're also results are also showing that you know it's interesting right so and it is fascinating this research because you're like well how does that work i don't know um maybe it's because women are maybe they're talking more and clarifying and confirming what they're hearing or what they think they're understanding perhaps it's that i, I don't know but i know that in that same body of research mm -hmm. it's very clear that women are closing their voices wow interesting that's very interesting yeah i think how i would how i approach certain situations i know someone called me out once i was talking to a sales guy who is who is a part of this company that's like a like a credit card it's kind of like this app that you would you put your credit card in you get cash rewards back or something okay. like that some, yeah. some new startup company and i was talking to him about my services and seeing how we could collaborate whatnot and he called me out on my um i don't know i guess my approach i don't know how you you would you would describe it but He's like, it's interesting how you, how you sell, how you sell and talk at the same, like how you talk when, or how you, I guess he said how you sell. He's like, you, every time you, you describe something, you always end it with, does that make any sense? Is, are you, does that make any sense to you? Or uh, do you know, do you know what I mean? Like I'm always ending with, do right. you understand? Do I need to clarify a little bit more? Or right. I'm very, he was like, he's like, it's funny. He's like, I like it because you're, you are real. You're trying to make sure that the other person on the other side of you is fully mm -hmm. understanding, comprehending what you're saying, and you really care if they actually understand or not, and you want to help them. Right, right, right. So yeah. I mean, that's probably why a lot of the women talk more. It's because they're probably trying to clarify more, or maybe they're oh, trying possibly. to. Possibly, unfortunately, it didn't say that. I'm just taking a guess, stab in the dark, because it, it, with the other research that I found um, related to how the brains work mm -hmm. and the different the different way brains are structured then it would sort of, it would kind of lead that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe. I, you know, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And I think the other thing too is women tend, and I, again, I say very broad generalizations, mm -hmm. women tend to be less aggressive. And I think in the business world now, I think aggressive sales has gone by the wayside. Mm -hmm. um, people don't respond to that anymore because we're all savvy. We all can see through that. It's the same like we don't respond to marketing the way we did mm -hmm. years ago. It's yeah. different because we are way smarter, way savvier, and we're, we, we aren't fooled. Right. So I feel like those people who can sell in a more, like this give and take, what we've been talking about, understanding people's needs, asking mm -hmm. questions to understand those needs, and not being like in your face, mm -hmm. I think they're more successful. So those salespeople, who are in your face tend to be more in the male persuasion. Doesn't mean they can't be successful, but they're probably not going to be as successful as a woman who can ask the question and listen. 100%. And of course, a man can ask the question and listen too. Before, All right. before I make everybody mad. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, the reality is everybody can be successful. Mm -hmm. It's just being uh, being able to do these things that we've been talking about. Right. One just comes naturally in, in one gender versus the other. I, I, but it both can do it. Be, right, right. It seems to be a little bit easier for women. Right. But it doesn't mean men can't do it too. So. Right, because they have been. Right, exactly, 100%. Right. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you another question. You, you mentioned this earlier on, and I kind of want to take it back a little bit. You said that when you have a conversation with someone, you, you find out real quick whether they're a good fit for you as a client or not. Right. But I, I have the tact, I use this certain tactic that I was taught, but I'm curious to what your tactic is. I'm sure it's very similar. What do you, what tool or tactic do you use to figure that out in the conversation early on? If they're, let's say for instance, like marketing services, good example. Sure, sure. When I well, talk to them, you know, I figure out real quick if, if they're a good fit for me by the budget they have. Yes. Well, and it's, it's very similar. I okay. find out um, what's the size of the organization. Mm -hmm. for, for me, if I'm going to do a training workshop, I need to be talking to a company that has at least 10 employees. Gotcha. It does not make sense for me to come in and do a training workshop for three people. Mm -hmm. that, that becomes more coaching. Okay. So, okay. So, I mean, sometimes what that turns into is, and then we discover that um, I can help by working with those people on, on a more individual basis, which we just call that coaching. Mm -hmm. um, but, but that's the same sort of thing. You're qualifying. Mm -hmm. qualifying all the time and, and one of the other things for me too is do you have a product or a service that you sell um how you know are you so for me right now i'm working with people that sell directly to consumers 
okay, if you don't, like I need to be working with people where there's more than one thing for them to sell. It's not a one-shot deal. So mm -hmm. for example, if I'm talking about working in the um, home services space and someone says, well, we do replacement windows. Well, there's not much in there for me because there it's like a one shot. They sell them the windows or they don't. Right. Where, where I'm looking to do is to build more where there's more opportunity for, I want to train the people that are not salespeople mm -hmm. and like the technicians who are installing things or handyman, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like you have a handyman who comes to your house to help you fix something. Well, that handyman has some knowledge of how to engage you and look around the house he's probably going to find a whole lot more opportunities for this company. Mm -hmm. right? 100%. Uh, right. So so if this is the sort of person that I want to work with, somebody who has the opportunity to more than one thing to, to, to sell to, more than one product or service that they're offering. Mm -hmm. I love it. That, I guess that makes sense. No, no, it makes it makes sense because yeah. one thing I was trained to do is it was called the gap analysis. So I would mm -hmm. I would see the gap between where they are now, right. where they want to be, and where they should be, and then I figure out how much they're spending from between that between right. that gap, and and then understand if they even have a marketing budget, and even if they're hitting the numbers that I want to see in a business in a business that I can work with. If that makes any right. sense. Right, right, because for you, it doesn't make sense for you to work with somebody on a really small scale. Exactly. Like it's not, well, it makes 50K a year in their business. Mm -hmm. That's not something I can work with at all. Right, right. And that's part of you qualifying. So mm -hmm. you're, what you're doing is asking questions to understand whether this person is likely to be someone that you can work with. And, they're, and also, um, do they have a need? That's the, the beginning part of your sales conversation. Right. 100%. Yeah. Okay. So I want to end. It, I want to ask you one one last question, and that's uh, kind of going into the the end mode of this conversation. But but I think it's a good way to get to that point is the mindset. Okay. So explain to me. Let's say sales sales for non sales people. What can they do right now? What are books? Anything that you you may, you can recommend mm -hmm. right now that they can they can um, read or study or you know look into that can help them with the mindset of going into sales or maybe just some ta ta tactics okay. they can you know learn more right now they can take sure. from this conversation. This helped you to get started. Okay. Um, so the very first thing is I, I and this is really 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 important is that it's connecting service to selling. Mm -hmm. So if you're not Really what it's about is, is delighting your customer from the very first encounter with your company to the very last encounter and all the way through. It's about delighting your customer. That's what selling really is. So you're, you're providing a service that helps them solve a problem, but you're delighting them all the way up. Mm -hmm. So this is where, that's where I talk about sales. For, sales for non-sales people falls into two categories. It's those people who are interacting with customers, like the people who are answering the phone. The people who I was mentioning, like the handyman who mm -hmm. wants to provide a service at home, they're, they're all salespeople because they have the opportunity to interact with a client and they're selling the company. Every interaction is contributing to the customer's perception of mm -hmm. that business, right? Right. And the, the other part is the salesperson who's actually selling who just doesn't think they're a salesperson. So in both cases, um, a book that I think is really great, and he's actually a local author, Okay. Called To Sell is Human. It's by Daniel Pink. He lives in Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, but I love, I love the book because he talks about how we're all selling all the time. And he's not even talking about it necessarily in a business context. He's talking about how we are all selling all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and he makes a really good um, base, statistical basis argument for it. And I think it's great, great reading. But you're asking about mindset. Um, one of the really good ones is Carol Dweck, and I can't think what it's called. I want to say it's probably something about mindset, but she talks about um, there are two different ways of having mindset. There's the, um, this is what I have, this is all I have, and I can't ever change it. Mm -hmm. And the other one is now I have a learning mindset, which is, all right, I'm going to learn more about this and get better and continue to improve. So when things go, you can imagine when things go wrong, how those two different mindsets will impact how people behave. If you think that what you have is all you have and something goes wrong, you're like, well, I'm never going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. If you have a learning mindset and something goes wrong, or let's just say you don't make the sale, then you think, okay, that didn't work this time. 
So I'm going to go do this so that I will be able to do this differently next time. Mm -hmm. So, so that's that's somebody. Um, it's a, uh, if you're talking about mindset specifically, but take it back even more mm -hmm. to basics. It's that selling a service. Got it. And that's that's the basic. It's your duty and your moral obligation. If you know that someone needs your help, it's your obligation to help them out. That's the way well, I say. It. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> at least that's how I see it I'm like you know yeah. what if I know they need my help and they're struggling it's my moral duty to at least go up there and see if I can help them or let at least let them hear me out so I can you know help them out well I, I that you take it further than I would but yes the point is that you can help right okay perfect all right well then what are maybe three three advice you would give maybe three or one or two doesn't matter well, good. You've tapped me out. I've given all my advice. Um, okay, so I guess I would say this. Thing. Sales is hard. Mm -hmm. Selling is hard. And even selling yourself is really hard. It right. takes a lot of time and because you're going to hear no. Mm -hmm. You hear a lot of no before you hear yes. So you have to be prepared for that and know that it's happening every day. It's mm -hmm. not just you. So if you're in a place where you need to start to make sales, or this is something that you're supposed to be doing, even if you're an entrepreneur, especially if you're an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. know that it's hard. But the more you do it, the better you will get at it. It's like anything else. The more you practice, the better you get. And then you want to master that skill. And as you're doing that, well, guess what? You're building your business. And suddenly you are successful. Right. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Kim. I really appreciate it. And thank you for your time and getting on here with me today early and <laughs> talking to me about sales. And I hope that I hope you guys really enjoyed this conversation because Kim's an expert at what she does. And if any of you women out there or even men need some assistance, yeah. we, I, Kim helps both genders. So she's not, she doesn't I discriminate. Mm -hmm. And if any of you guys out there are looking to get trained in sales, I think Kim is a great option to go to. She definitely knows her stuff and she can definitely help you start increasing your sales in your own business. For sure. And if I might just throw in a plug for myself, like yeah. I mentioned earlier, I do write regularly and I have some really great information on my blog. Mm -hmm. You can find that on my website and it's my name. It's Kim Frederick. I'll spell it because it's weird. Mm -hmm. um, Kimfrederick.com and it's F-R-E-D-R-I-C-H. And, and I, I know there's just a ton of stuff on there. Yeah, she has amazing, amazing stuff, guys. So if you get a chance, look look her up, check her stuff out. And hey, if you want to have a conversation with her, I'll have information after this video of her contact info to reach out to her. Perfect. That sounds right. great. I really appreciate that you had me on today. I never, <laughs> uh, we had such a great conversation. It was not what I was expecting, but look at all this amazing stuff we talked about. I know. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what people yeah. think about it. I'm excited to hear some of their comments as well. Sounds good. All right, guys, thank you for listening. And Kim, thank you again for being on here. I appreciate it. Great to, great to be here.